Hey everybody, Mike here, and today I'm going to be doing a playthrough of Battle for Greyport from Slugfest Games. This is an offshoot of the Red Dragon Inn franchise, except it's a cooperative deck builder of town defense instead of <laughs> whatever Red Dragon Inn is, I guess a competitive drinking and gambling game? A quick shout out to Slack member Jan, who is actually the one that suggested this game to me in the first place. I had never heard of it before that, and it's become one of my favorite uh, deck builders, so... Thanks, Jan. And speaking of the Slack, Battle for Greyport was voted on by our Slack members as the next game to do a playthrough for. So if you haven't joined our Slack yet, just check down in the little info box underneath this video and join. For this playthrough, I'm going to be playing the scenario The Interrupted Party. This is the introductory scenario in the core game, although I will note the version I'm playing is one that comes with the expansion, but is also freely available to print on the Slugfest Games website. The reason for that is that the original intro scenario, and kind of the original game overall, was overly hard and actually gave the game a really bad reputation out of the gate. So they've added some extra rules to make it easier, and they've also rebalanced this introductory scenario. The main extra rule they added was basically to heal in between the different uh, encounters of the scenario. I'm not playing with that, I'm going to play on what's called Hardcore Mode, because this scenario is fairly easy, so I wanted to give myself some challenge as I showed you the game. But let's read some flavor text. You and your adventuring companions have just arrived at the Red Dragon Inn to celebrate the success of your latest heroic adventure. Your celebration will have to wait though, because the evil Drog has brought a small army of marauding monsters to attack the city. So to show you what's on here, we have that it's an easy difficulty. We have the different monster decks we'll be facing. Uh, we'll face this one first, the beasts, and then we'll get to these more advanced enemies in the second encounter. We've got three encounters at three locations. They match up, and this is pretty standard for all the uh, scenarios in the game. And uh, to win, we have to defeat Drog and all the other monsters. Drog will be a boss who will come out at the end. And uh, we lose if any player is defeated. I'm going to be playing a two-player game here. You do have to control at least two characters to play the game, and you'll see why, since there's a lot of cooperation in it. So they have little setup cards for each encounter uh, out of the three for the scenario. And uh, it depends on how many players are in it to determine all the statistics you're going to use. So the location I'm defending, which is the Greyport City Hall, will have 11 life. I'll spawn four points worth of enemies on City Hall. And then each character, each player, will get two points of enemies spawned on them. We're using only the beasts, as I mentioned. And we've got uh, two bronze and two silver coins per player. We'll see what all that means in a moment. And uh, if we lose the location, we each lose one hit point. So here's City Hall with the 11 life that was indicated on the scenario card. And note that it has a special ability. When a player recruits a physical card, that player may snipe one. We'll explain what that means pretty soon. And we also have a bonus if we save the location. Each player may immediately recruit a card from the reinforcements, paying for the recruitment as normal. Now the encounter card said we were going to draw four points worth of enemies. Right now we're drawing only from the Beast deck. We'll add in these more challenging monsters after the next encounter. So we draw one at a time, and you'll see that they have this little challenge rating at the bottom here. So this is two of our four points with this giant cobra. And these are the guys actually attacking City Hall. And we've got another two, a Quill Beast. So we're actually done. Now I will note that you can go over because you draw cards until you equal or go over. So let's say I drawn a one to go with the two. Then I would draw again, and I might have gotten a two and have five points total. Not a big deal. Let's look at these monsters more closely to show you how they work in the game. They've each got a life stat, how much damage it takes to defeat them. They've got their own damage stat, which is how much they do to the location or to me. And don't forget the City Hall has 11 life right now, so it's going to be taking 3 damage a turn combined from the Giant Cobra and the Quill Beast. And then they might have some special power text, or they might have a keyword like the Quill Beast who is ranged. So the Giant Cobra says when he deals damage to a player, that player puts a curse on top of their deck. Basically a dead card that just clogs up your deck. The Quill Beast is ranged. That means you can't fight him until you've fought all the people who are not ranged. So I would have to kill the Giant Cobra before I could attack the Quill Beast. Before I spawn my own monsters, let's look at the two characters I'm playing. So first I have Fiona the Volatile. You get this oversized card that actually represents your hero and one of the cooler uh, design choices of the game. And how it works is, basically, I have this card every turn, or at least every time it's uh, is the end of my turn, I get it back. And uh, this card actually levels up as we go through the encounters. So right now it's a level 1, I'm rolling a yellow die, which is one of the weakest dice. And I have the cleave ability, I can basically hit two monsters for the price of one. 
But as we progress through the encounter, I'm going to get stronger and stronger with this card, which again is going to keep coming back to my hand. Additionally, Fiona has nine cards. Uh, it's a pretty basic deck of generally very weak items. So all cards are either heroes or items, and I count as a hero. So I'm going to start with a bunch of weak magic and physical heroes. You'll see sort of the reddish is physical, the blue is magic. And additionally, some items they can wield, like a short sword. And just like the monsters, this is the amount of damage they do. It's either going to be a number value or a die. And we'll show you the dice soon, but they have varied results based on their color. Uh, none of these guys really, except for maybe the items, are going to have any special powers. This is all very basic stuff that you start out with. And the key thing is you can play basically one hero per turn, including yourself, and additionally equip yourself or whichever hero you play with one item that matches their color. So the Acolyte could use the chron chronometer, chronometer, but the Soldier could not. Fiona has 10 life, and uh, so does my other character. And just to remind you, if we lose all 10 for either hero, we immediately lose. She's going to be the first player, the defending player, so she has the taunt token. We'll explain what that means in a moment. Both my players have two silver and two bronze coins for building their deck, basically. And she's going to start with five cards. So we've got Soldier, an Acolyte, another Acolyte, another Soldier, come on, item. And there we go, a Short Sword. So I've got one item and uh, two of each color of Soldier. Two Physical, two Magic. My other character is Kronos the Time Mage, who also rolls a yellow die. Instead of attacking two monsters, uh, cleaving like Fiona does, he can re-roll a yellow or white die used in the fight to try to get a better result. For his five cards, he's getting a soldier, a wand of magic missile, it's a magic item that he or an acolyte could use, another soldier, an acolyte, another acolyte. Now lest we forget, the encounter setup said that each of our heroes would start with two points worth of enemies. So Fiona is getting a worm, it has an ambush effect, which we'll resolve in just a moment. And it's only one point. She's also getting a razor tooth beast. And here's what I was talking about. She actually went up to three points instead of the two she was supposed to have because uh, she was not quite to two before she drew her second higher value card. So ambush says the player this is in front of discards an item. Basically ambush effects happen the second that the enemy is spawned and then never happen again. Whereas a razor tooth just has a bunch of damage. So Fiona is going to discard her short sword right off the bat and be left with just a bunch of people and herself. King going to Kronos the Time Mage. He's going to get a Shellback. Heroes without items can't fight Shellback, so you can't even use them at all. He only does one damage, then only six life, and he is two, so that's actually all that Kronos is going to draw for his turn. So the game is played over a series of rounds. In basic terms, one player will be the defending player, so that'll be Fiona for this turn. And she'll get to play one hero and one item per hero. Now, cards will let you play more heroes eventually, but for right now we don't have any of those. And those heroes will get to attack and deal their damage values to uh, any enemies engaged with them. If all the enemies engaged with a player are defeated, then they can start attacking the enemies on the location itself to try to save the location. Additionally, and here's where the cooperation comes in, the other players can each also play one hero and maybe an item on that hero. And you can't play items by themselves. You need to have a matching hero to actually play them. And like I said, you can use your hero over and over again. The key thing is you get your hero back at the end of your turn, but not at the end of another player's turn. So for example, there's no reason for me not to use Fiona this turn because I'm gonna get her right back and clearly she is stronger than either of my other people. Additionally, the defending player has the ability to taunt one monster each turn. And what that means is they can basically pull a monster from somewhere else. So I could pull Kronos's shell back. I could cool, pull the giant cobra or the quill beast from the town to try to save City Hall. I don't really need to do that right now with how things are, but it is just an option available to the sort of active player each turn. Now after we've all played our heroes and maybe items and done our damage, any living creatures will attack the active player. So Fiona will get attacked by her razor tooth beast and worm for potentially three damage. And then also the location will get attacked for whatever uh, value of enemies are on it as well. And just to finish up our little overview, you end the turn with the ability to buy one new item or hero. You'll see they have bronze, silver, or gold costs. Right now I only have bronze and silver coins for my characters. And this goes straight into your hand, not into your deck, so you get to use it the very next turn. 
All right, so we get into our first turn. We're clearly going to play Fiona because uh, none of the other heroes can really do much. She's going to roll a yellow die, and she has cleave, so she'll hit both the worm and the razor tooth beast. Now, you do have these special custom dice. The yellow die rolls between a one and a four with a slight leaning toward, well, actually, it's right in the middle. You got two twos, two threes, one one, and one four. So players can play actions whatever order they want. So I could play Fiona, and then uh, Kronos could do something, and then I could attack with Fiona, and then Kronos could do something, or I could do all of my stuff, and then Kronos could do all of his. There is a lot of uh, strategy and kind of cooperation and who goes when, but uh, for now it's not going to affect things much, and I'm not going to taunt anybody from the location or the shellback because she's already in terrible danger. So Fiona's going to attack. This uh, yellow die is going to affect both of them equally, so I don't roll separately. And unfortunately I got a 2, not a great result. Two damage tokens are going to be added to the Worm and to the Razor Beast. I'll note they have threes on the other side, sort of similar to Summoner Wars and some other games to make uh, bookkeeping a little bit easier. Now Cronus can help out, so he's going to send one of his Acolytes over and have her attack for just one damage on the Razor Tooth Beast, since he's doing twice as much damage to Fiona. And uh, that's all he can do. So with both players having taken their turn, Fiona now suffers her three damage, which is pretty terrible for her first turn, jeez. And the location also suffers 1, 2, 3 damage, leaving it with 8 overall. And note that the location gets attacked on every player's turn. So it, uh, unlike the players, you only get attacked when it's their active turn. The location gets hit and hit and hit. So eventually you do have to taunt away some of the monsters so it doesn't get totally destroyed. Next we have a cleanup phase where both Fiona and Kronos get to discard the cards they used. Although Fiona, since it's her character, she just kind of puts it near her deck and she'll uh, get it back in just a moment. So now Fiona has to decide what to recruit, and uh, we've got some magic items. A freezing staff, bronze, rolls a white die of damage. Projected wings, two damage, but also lets you taunt and cleave. Not too useful for her, since she's uh, not even a red hero. An elven bow lets you snipe six. That's six damage immediately to any monster on the entire board. That's what sniping means. A mace adds five. That's for silver. And then we've got two gold here as we can't afford. A holy templar that rolls one white die. And a wench who's fairly complicated, she can either snipe or uh, make herself magical or do splash, which means she damages even the people she's not actually targeting. The fairly clear choice here is going to be the mace for one of Fiona's two silver coins. So she has uh, two bronze and one silver left. The five damage combined with Fiona's uh, yellow die, that's going to be cleaving as well. So she's going to be able to do five damage plus a yellow to two different enemies. That should help her clear out her board very quickly next turn. Now the purchase card is immediately replaced with a kunai, bronze. Oh, this is a cool one, so you can taunt, and it's two damage, but it also lets you play another hero that turn. Super useful to get cards like that, because they kind of replace themselves in a way. And let's not forget the location power. When a player recruits a physical card, that player may snipe one. So since I got a red card, hero or item, I can deal one damage to any monster on the board. Now since I'm going to have this mace next turn, there's no way I'm not going to defeat both of my monsters. So I'm actually going to snipe the shell back for one. Hopefully he'll be uh, easier to defeat this uh, next turn for Kronos. Now don't forget the mace goes straight to my hand along with my two soldiers and two acolytes. And I don't have a discard step. I can discard as many cards as I want. I'm going to get rid of all of this crappy stuff to try to get through my deck faster so that I'll cycle to my mace again pretty quickly. I then refill my hand to five. So I got an acolyte, a soldier, and two yellow rolling blue items, which is going to be super useful in a second to help out Kronos. Additionally, as I had mentioned, I do add my hero card back only at the end of my turn, not if it was the end of Kronos' turn. That leaves my deck empty, I've gone through, so when I shuffle at the end of uh, my next turn, I will be able to get my mace hopefully right back for another use. I end the round by passing the taunt marker over to Kronos, and things should be a lot faster now because uh, we've kind of gone through all the basic rules of the game. Okay, so Kronos is going to play himself since he'll get himself back. Remember, the shellback cannot be attacked unless the person has an item. So we are going to play a Wand of Magic Missile on Kronos. And don't forget, he can re-roll his yellow die if the result is not good. So let's attack with him. Okay, we got a 2, which is almost the lowest result. There is the 1. So I'm going to use his ability, and I'm going to hopefully get a 4, which with the plus 1 would do 5 damage and kill the shell back outright. But no, I got another 2. Plus 1 for the magic wand gives us 3 damage. The shell back is left with 2, which is unfortunate because now he'll do 1 damage to Kronos. 
But wait, we can't forget about Fiona. She can play a hero as well and with one item. So here she's got an Acolyte with a Chronometer for one yellow die of damage. So that's three damage, enough to defeat the Shellback. Now I'll note that Cronus could taunt a monster over, but he doesn't want to get hurt, so we're not going to do that. Now City Hall does get attacked for three more damage. So it can only survive uh, one more turn of damage, and then we'll have to taunt, uh, I guess, the Quill Beast away. Otherwise, uh, City Hall will get destroyed. We go to our cleanup phase. Fiona discards her Acolyte and Chronometer. Cronus discards his Wanda Magic Missile, and he hangs out to be redrawn in a moment. Okay, and Cronus has an option of what he wants to buy, and he's going to get this Protecting Ring, or Projecting Ring, for his Silver Coin. This will be a great item for him to use, let him taunt, and give him cleave so he'll be kind of similar to Fiona when he's the one wielding it. And that goes straight to his hand along with two soldiers and an acolyte that we're probably about to discard. And drawing a replacement, we get a Tainted Blade. This one's nice because it gives a white die, which is a very powerful amount of damage, and it lets you retire the card that used it, which means it goes away from the game entirely, so it gives you a little bit of culling of your deck. All right, similar Fiona, I'm going to discard all these cruddy cards and redraw four new cards. I get an Acolyte, two Soldiers, and a Sword and Board. That's a one damage item that also lets you taunt somebody away. We'll add Kronos back to our hand as well, and we're going back to Fiona. So as we've mentioned before, Fiona is going to straight up murder some guys with her mace. So we'll play Fiona with the mace. And this is doing, gosh, it is a lot of damage. Um, five plus a yellow die. We don't even need the yellow die, though, because neither of these guys has more than five life left. So, all right, not rolling very well with that one, but it doesn't matter. Both the Razor Tooth Beast and the Worm are defeated. Now, Fiona could taunt away the Giant Cobra or the Quill Beast, but the City Hall is going to survive for one more turn, so she would rather not take the damage. But Cronus can still play his hero and item, and uh, in this case he can attack the people on the location, only because Fiona has no monsters left in front of her. He can play the soldier with the sword and board. An arrow down means this ability happens the second you play the card, so we have an optional taunt. But, well actually, you know, Cronus might as well taunt away the, uh, the Quill Beast, because he can't hit it since it has range. He's going to taunt it away next turn anyway, and that'll mean City Hall will really survive for a long time. So we'll taunt the Quill Beast away, and he'll go ahead and do two damage to the Giant Cobra. So Fiona had no enemies again. The City Hall is going to take one damage from the Giant Cobra, so it's got four life and it can survive for a very, very long time now. Then we'll do cleanup. Both the Mace and Fiona will be discarded, as well as Cronus' Sword and Board and his Soldier. Okay, now Fiona gets to recruit. I'm torn between the Tainted Blade to get rid of some of my uh, Soldiers so I can draw my better cards more quickly. Or the kunai that lets me play an entire extra hero and taunt. And even the elven bow is good. But I do love culling my decks in these games, so I am going to buy the Tainted Blade for one of my bronze. That leaves Fiona with one bronze and one silver. And our replacement is... Ooh, a great axe. Four damage and uh, a taunt as well. That'd be a great one to buy as well. Don't forget the location lets Fiona taunt somebody when she buys a physical item. So she is going to go ahead and taunt the giant cobra to leave him with only seven out of his ten life left. So Fiona gets the Tainted Blade. She's going to keep it with the Soldier so she can be sure to discard him, but she will get rid of the Chronometer. Shuffling her deck, she gets an Acolyte, another Acolyte, and a Soldier. So not a, much of a great hand. But she also comes back ready to fight again. Coming over to Kronos, he's got a Quill Beast, uninjured. Now the Quill Beast does have range, but there are no other monsters to defend him, so he can be attacked normally. Cronus is going to play himself with a projecting ring. Um, and actually, he could taunt the other guy over and then damage both of these guys. Yeah, I'm not confident that Cronus will be able to kill them both. So let's not do that. I think Fiona will be able to take care of the, uh, the giant cobra without too much trouble. So Cronus will attack. He's got two plus a yellow that he can re-roll. He rolls a three plus two is five, leaving the quill beast with just one life remaining. So Fiona's going to save her soldier with the Tainted Blade and instead send out an Acolyte to finish off the Quill Beast for one more damage. The only monster left to deal damage is the Giant Cobra on City Hall, but City Hall's still doing pretty well. Fiona discards her Acolyte, Cronus discards his Projecting Ring, and himself, but he'll come back in just a moment. Now Cronus gets to buy a car, and he can't just always buy good items, so he's going to get this Holy Templar with a white die of damage. He's going to replace it with, ooh, a Barbarian. White plus one damage and cleave. So if Fiona gets that, she could have cleaving all the time. 
Now I will note, you don't have to buy just the people of your color, but it kind of makes sense to focus on red or on blue, so I'm doing one of each with my different characters. Cronus wants his strong cards back, so he's going to keep the Holy Templar, but get rid of the Soldier and the Acolyte. And he's going to draw... Soldier, 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 and his sword and board. Jeez, that's a pretty red little deck there, except for the cards I'd already kept. Okay, Fiona is up, and a few things happen at the beginning of her turn. Anytime you have no active monsters in front of you, you must immediately use the taunt to get a monster. You can never start your turn without a monster. Which means she needs to pull the giant cobra. Now, quick note, no one is threatening City Hall anymore, and there's no way for monsters to go back to a location. So that means that City Hall is now saved. That means we immediately get its uh, bonus, which says each player may immediately recruit a card from the reinforcement, spending a coin as normal. So I think Fiona is going to get that Barbarian, and she's going to add it to her hand right away. That leaves her with a Silver gone and just one Bronze left. And again, any time cards are taken, they are immediately replaced, so Kronos will have a different option of things to get. And there are literally no Magic cards except for the Freezing Staff, so Kronos will buy that, leaving him with a Silver card. And don't forget, even though it was out of turn, Fiona did recruit a Physical card, so she's getting to snipe the Giant Cobra, leaving him with a 6 life left out of 10. So as planned, Fiona's going to play a soldier with a tainted blade on him. So he's going to do one plus a white die. White dice are standard d6s. So they do go all the way up to six, but still go down to one. And then after the fight, I will get rid of that soldier from my deck entirely. So he needs to do uh, six damage total. Four plus one is five. Means the giant cover only has one life left. Should be easy for Kronos to finish him off. But I do immediately get rid of this soldier forever. He is out of my deck altogether. And Cronus will go ahead and send a soldier with a shield he doesn't really need. I just got to get him out of his hand, and that will defeat the giant cobra and end this particular encounter. Okay, so when an encounter ends, a few things happen. First, we have a cleanup phase immediately, so Fiona will discard her tainted blade, Cronus his sword and board and soldier. Then we immediately get to recruit with all our remaining coins, so you never get penalized for not having recruited everything. Uh, Fiona's going to get that kunai that she wanted to give her an extra hero use. She draws a replacement, getting an attenuating ring. Ooh, draw a card and plus one hero. Now, Kronos has a silver left, but he could still get the attenuating ring if he wanted to. But I'll note that the wench can also use magical items if she uses the, or chooses that choice when she's played. So, I can always get the attenuating ring next time. I think I'm gonna get the wench because she's a full use of my silver coin. We draw a new card. Getting an assassin. Yellow plus two, and you can attack anyone regardless of whether they have tank, ranged, and ignoring armor. And finally, we get a final chance to discard to set up for the next battle. Fan will discard this acolyte and the soldier, but keep the kunai and the barbarian. Drawing up to five, she gets whatever blue items, another blue item, and an acolyte, so at least they can use the items. We also upgrade Fiona to her level 2 form, which uh, now she has Taunt, still has Cleave, and rolls a white die instead of a yellow. So a nice upgrade there. Kronos also upgrades from level 1 to level 2. So now he has Dual Wield. I can play uh, two items on him instead of one. And he can reroll any die, not just yellow or white. As for his discards, he can clearly get rid of the two soldiers. But the Wench, the Holy Templar, and the Freezing Staff are all solid cards, so he's going to keep all of those. And he'll additionally draw his Projecting Ring again, and the Acolyte. This is pretty great because now that he's got Dual Wield, he could use both the Freezing Staff and the Projecting Ring to do two white dice with Cleave. That should be an amazing first turn for him. And he will get the first turn, by the way, since Fiona was the one who finished up last time. But let's go set up our second encounter. So consulting our new encounter, now we're in the melee at the market at the Markdate Date District. Note that a new monster icon comes up. So we take our original beast deck and we do not shuffle in the discards. They stay dead. But we take our more powerful cards and shuffle them in with the beasts. Per the encounter card, the market district will have 11 life. It'll have 4 points of monsters spawned on it and we will each have 3 points of monsters spawned on us. And now we have a bronze, 2 silver, and a gold. Amazing. Okay, spawning our monsters to the market, we get... A hulking monstrosity, 14 life, and he's a 2. And an ogre, also with 14 life, also a 2. So two humongous monsters to start out there. As for Fiona, she gets 
A rat master. He has an ambush we'll see in a second, but he's worth two. And another rat master, also worth two. So these rat masters each only have one damage and four life, but they each spawn a rat swarm, also with four life and one damage. And tank, but splash damage is doubled against them. Sorry I don't have any of that. Meanwhile, Kronos, our first player, gets... A clay golem. Now this is the only guy he gets, because uh, it's three value. But he's got two damage and ten life, and he's cursed, which means every time he damages Kronos, Kronos will take a curse card that'll just kind of sit and clog up his deck. All right, so don't forget, Kronos has a lovely first turn. He's got himself. He can play the projecting ring to give himself cleave. And because he has dual wield, he can also play the staff. So that's two whites, and uh, he can re-roll any one die he fights with. And he's also cleaving. And the ring lets him immediately taunt. He's going to pull one of Fiona's rat swarms. Because don't forget, Fiona took three damage, but Kronos took none. So he'd rather be tanking for her quite a bit. Now, he could also pull one more person with the Taunt token, but let's see how this fight goes before we consider doing that. So, Cronus will attack, and again, it's two white dice plus two more. So, our first roll before a possible re-roll. Oh my gosh, no re-roll needed. Five plus four is nine, plus two more is eleven. Both the Clay Golem and the Rat Swarm are destroyed. And I don't think I want to taunt another person. I don't need to take damage over here. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to destroy all of those rats next turn. So we're not going to worry about that yet. But our giant friends do deal their 1, 2, 3 damage to the market district, leaving with 8 left. And a quick note, the market district's power says, Play with the top card of the item deck revealed. Players may recruit that card as though it were part of the reinforcements. So let's go reinforce and see what we get. So don't forget, we now have a gold, 2 silver, and 1 bronze. So I'm looking between either the Attenuating Ring, which lets uh, Kronos play a second hero, or Serena the Pious, who rolls a green die, which is ridiculously powerful, the most powerful die in the game, and can also use magical items. He's clearly going to buy both of those at some point, but for now I do want the more items that let me play more heroes, so I'm going to use up my only bronze to get the Attenuating Ring. We get another Projecting Ring, and also I forgot, even though I just said it, ooh, Scepter of Mastery. So that is a green plus four amount of damage. That's also a gold. It's going to be a super hard choice deciding between those two cards with my single gold. Okay, Kronos still has some solid cards. He's going to get rid of the Acolyte. And he'll draw two cards, a replacement Acolyte, and a Soldier. And he'll, of course, add himself back in the mix. Come out of Fiona's turn. Well, she just kind of laughs at these... Uh, Tiny little rats in front of her. I'm actually going to play the Wench first. And I realize now I kind of made a mistake. Uh, she actually has Splash 2, which could have destroyed both of the Rat Swarms automatically. So I probably shouldn't have pulled the Rat Swarm. I should have pulled one of the Rat Masters last turn. But, eh, well, too late for that. I'm actually going to live a bit dangerously and also taunt over the weaker of the two giants, the Hulking Monstrosity, just because I want him to get in on all the damage we're going to do this turn. So before Fiona plays any of her people, the wench is going to go ahead and attack, and again give herself Splash 2, and she's rolling a white die against her target. Her target will be the Hulking Monstrosity, but she's going to do Splash 2 to everybody else. So she does 6 damage to the Hulking Monstrosity. Splash damage is doubled to the rat, so he takes 4 and is gone immediately. And both the rat masters take 2 damage and are severely injured. Now for Fiona, she's going to go ahead and play her Barbarian, with her kunai, so that means she can play another hero, herself probably, if she needs to. So this will be uh, a white plus three damage. And she's cleaving, so she'll attack the Hulking Monstrosity and one of the Rat Masters. Okay, so three plus one, two, three, that's six. So the Hulking Monstrosity has two life left. And the Rat Master is totally destroyed. And then laughing at her power and glory, because again, I can play one more hero. Fiona is also going to cleave. Now, hopefully I don't roll a 1, or they'll both still be alive, and I'll be very embarrassed. Nope! They are destroyed. So in very quick order, and don't forget, this is the intro scenario, so uh, I should be kicking some butt. Uh, we have the Market District only take 2 damage. No one else is left except for this Ogre, although Cronus is going to be forced to pull him over in a second, and hopefully he can do a lot of damage to him. Coming over here, I could buy Brewmaster Frank, who's a great uh, physical hero. But I think I'm going to get the Great Axe. Does almost as much damage as the Mace and also has Taunt. Very useful. That's going to use up one of Fiona's Silvers, so she has one of each type left. 
and move the scepter over, and the new item is a Wand of Flame. Oh, man. Yellow plus two, not that great, but splash three to everybody else engaged with that person. So that's pretty amazing. Okay, and Fiona's going to get rid of all of her blue stuff. She doesn't need it. Keep the great axe and draw an all-new hand otherwise. So she gets her mace, her kunai, a soldier, and a short sword. A lot of items, but she can use at least some of them. So as Cronus' turn starts, he must taunt immediately because he has no monster, so the ogre's going over to him, which tells me we save the market district, and in that case, that just means we're going to have that fifth item available for the rest of the game, so a pretty simple ability there. Now, it's worth noting, the ogre is the first person we fought with armor. That means that every time he's attacked, he's going to subtract one from that attack. So, hmm, I can use my Holy Templar, but I'd rather not if I don't have to, because I'd rather him still be in my hand at the beginning of the next fight. So I'm definitely going to use Kronos, with the Attenuating Ring, that lets him draw a card, and he can play another hero if he needs to. He doesn't have to yet. And the card that draws another Acolyte, that's not helping too much. So let's see how well Kronos does by himself before we see what else we're going to play. Rolls the white die. Two, he uses reroll on that. <laughs> Still gets a two. So that's four damage, minus one. That's three damage to the Ogre. Not too much. All right, so we will bring Fiona in. And, hmm, I don't want to use my Mace because I want to do a huge cleave right at the start of the next fight. I guess I could use my kunai. Yeah, let's do that instead of the great axe. Let's save that as well. So she's going to attack with a kunai. So that's a white plus two. Ah, oh, God. So that's another three damage after the armor. But uh, with the kunai, she can actually taunt... Well, she would have had to taunt the ogre away right away, and then she wouldn't have been able to hurt him. So let's not do that. But she can play another hero, and so can Kronos. If I just play the Soldier and the Sword, that'll only do one damage. If I play the Soldier with something like the Great Axe, that'll do four damage, leaving with four life left. That's still pretty tough for the Holy Templar to finish off. So let's see what the Templar can do by himself first. We'll play him as the plus hero from the Attenuating Ring. And he gets four, so that's minus one is three. So the Ogre has five life left, which means if I can do six damage minus one armor, I'll kill him before he does two damage to Kronos. And hey, I can do six damage. One plus five from a mace, because uh, the kunai let Fiona play an extra hero. So that'll do the six. I've used up one of my really good cards, unfortunately. But I've also uh, defeated the ogre before he damaged my friend at all. Both characters level up again for the final encounter. Fiona now gets plus two attack if she had an item, which uh, we'll make sure she does. And she still cleaves and taunts. And Kronos just gets to reroll as many dice as he wants, not just a single result. So to see a slight upgrade on his ability. In terms of recruitment... <sighs> Oh, man. I still have the really hard choice of whether I get a big hero or a big item for Kronos. I think I have to go for the Scepter of Mastery, because if he can uh, use his dual wield to also cleave with that, that's just amazing. The Wand of Flame comes down, and we get a Circlet of Focus. That's some of your tire cards. That's not going to be too useful with only one uh, encounter left in the game. Just to make sure I get that great cleave right off the bat, I'm going to use uh, one of Cronus' silvers to get the projecting ring. So now he'll have cleave and the scepter of mastery in his starting hand for the next fight. We get another great axe revealed. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get... Uh, I'm going to get Serena the Pious for Fiona, since she does more damage than Brewmaster Frank. And using magical items, that won't hurt either, in case I get a really bad draw. We reveal a Collegium Elder. He's a sub... <laughs> Just a yellow guy who taunts, so it's not too impressive. Between the mace and the great axe, I'd rather have a little bit more damage, so I'm going to get the mace as well with a Fiona Silver, leaving her with just a bronze. And we add another Tainted Blade. Well, I guess she's going to buy that with her bronze, because uh, not fairly for the retiring, but because uh, one white die is going to be great in the final battle. That leaves just Kronos with a silver, and not too many great options to use with it. I mean, the Eagle Eye Sniper doesn't really need an item. You can just discard two cards and then snipe eight, which is fairly amazing. Or I can get the Elven Bow and snipe six, but then I would need somebody. But uh, I don't have that many plus character plays. Yeah. I guess I'll get the Eagle Eye Sniper. That's not really a great buy for me. We replace it with Townsfolk. This is actually one of my favorite ones. Yes, it's bronze, but it lets you play another hero and draw a card, so it kind of just churns through your deck and lets you play more items. I wish more of those had come up earlier. All right, let's see what we want to keep in Fiona's hand to start the next battle. We're clearly getting rid of the short sword, clearly keeping Serena the Pious, I think the Mace and the Great Axe. I actually don't really need the Tainted Blade. There's another one coming up. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually going to discard that, even though I just bought it and draw two new cards. We got two acolytes. Well, it's okay. We've got uh, 
Great people to play on both her turn and on Cronus' turn, so that should be okay. As for Kronos, we've already got our combo of the Scepter and the uh, Ring to give me the Cleave. So I'm going to discard everybody, including the Eagle Eye uh, Diaper, and try to get something better. And get a Wand of Magic Missile, an Acolyte, and the Sniper again. Well, not a lovely hand, but thank God for those. Okay, we're going to our final battle. We'll note that uh, the Red Dragon Inn is going to have t uh, 12 life, quite a lot. And the inn has an amazing ability that I actually forgot about, which lets the defending player, the, the active player, not the one who's helping out, play an extra hero every turn. Ridiculous. We're going to add four points of monsters to the location. In this case, we get a warg. So that's a two, and we're going to add a warg token, so it'll actually be two of those guys. And a griffin. That's two and two, so that nicely finishes off the amount of people there. Here's our extra warg token, identical to the other one. Unfortunately, we don't finish off the location because we also add Drog Troll General, as it says here in setup, to the location. He does two damage, has two armor, and he has some abilities. Ferocious and Vengeful basically mean that if I attack anybody up here, he's going to come down and start attacking us. And it means that he's going to attack each of us every turn. So he jumps from character to character to character to character. You can't really avoid him. The scenario tells us that he has 20 life. So we're going to put this little 20 life marker right on him to remind us. And then we'll also get four points worth of uh, enemies in just a moment. And as we feel the power flowing through us, we will each have two gold and two silver coins to spend. That'll be awesome for all the great stuff that's in the market right now. Coming over to Fiona, we're going to spawn four points of monsters for her. We've got a harpy worth two. Each player discards a card. Ah, it's going to mess up what I was going to do with Kronos. Uh, two damage and 11 life. And a Naga, another two, 15 life, geez. Each player draws a card, then gains a curse. Oh, the drawing card will help, though. So we do these in order. We each discard a card, so clearly she'll get rid of an Acolyte. And Cronus will get rid of this Wand of Magic Missile. And the Naga lets us use draw a card. So I get a Soldier. Cronus against the Wench back. Nice, not too bad. Then we each gain a curse. Now this goes into our discard pile, so actually, Kronos just shuffled. We might never even see these, so that wasn't too bad of an ambush. And let's see who Kronos gets, since he's ready with his one-two punch of destruction right here. He gets a Gorgon, 12 life, 2 damage, uh, 2 threat, ranged. And an Orc Warlord, 1 armor, 10 life, 1 damage, and the player who this is in front of can't draw cards. So, uh, but I have a feeling that the Scepter and Kronos together will just destroy both those guys with no problem whatsoever. Now, a quick note that if I add it all up, the location's going to take 5 damage per turn. It's only got 12. So I pretty much need to start taunting guys right away if I don't want it to get destroyed and make us each take 3 damage. And also, don't forget its amazing ability to let me play a free extra hero. That should be useful right away. Okay, Fiona's up right off the bat. She's going to taunt over this griffin, because I think she's going to play some huge guys this turn and just go crazy. You mentioned she's going to play Serena the Pious with a Great Axe, which also lets me taunt. And she's going to taunt... <laughs> Gosh, there's so many fun people. She's going to taunt this, uh, this orc warlord, I think. And gosh, I forgot, Fiona can taunt herself again. But let's see how this goes first. So Serena with the Great Axe is going to attack both the Naga and the Orc Warlord, the two tougher people we have. So why am I so confident in taunting so much? It's because the green die is absurd. It rolls a four as the lowest, but goes all the way up to eight. And uh, yes, it's very consistently awesome. So let's see, she's got green plus six. Let's see how that goes. So that's 12 damage. The Orc Warlord is destroyed outright. Uh, 10 plus one armor is not enough to save him. And the Naga is left with almost no life. Alright, Kronos is going to help out by sending the Wench in. I'm going to choose to snipe three immediately, so that'll finish off the Naga. And I'll play Fiona with a Mace, so she's ready to attack. And that lets me taunt immediately, so I'll taunt one of these Wargs over as well, because why not? Okay, Fiona's going to attack the Harpy and the Griffin first. Actually, sorry, she can't because the Griffin is rained. So let's see if the Wench can kill the Warg first. No, she cannot, so I did make a little tactical error there. So Fiona will have to attack the Harpy and the Warg. The Warg is clearly going to get destroyed, but the Harpy might survive. She's white, plus five, plus two more from her new ability, so that is white plus seven. Oh, 
Only nine damage. The warg is certainly melted, but the harpy is left with two life. So unfortunately, it's too late to play anything else. I did make a few errors there at the end, and that means Fiona's going to take three damage. Uh, she had seven, so that leaves her with only four. The location, meanwhile, got super cleared out, so it only takes three damage. It's still got nine remaining. Okay, it's Fiona's turn to buy, and, uh, hmm. She can go for Brewmaster Frank or for the Great Axe. Uh, well, he lets me draw a card, but the Great Axe will definitely let her cleave for a lot. But let's go for the Brewmaster. He seems more fun. So there's a green attack. Each player gets to draw a card, and he can retire a card. That doesn't matter too much. And our replacement is another Townsfolk. I, again, might just buy those even though they're bronze just because I love them. Fiona's going to keep the Brewmaster but get rid of both the Acolyte and the Soldier and draw four new cards. She gets another Acolyte, one of those weak blue items. Uh, Tainted Blade, which heck, I'll probably just give to the, the Brewmaster. Ooh, and the Barbarian. Maybe he'll use it. I'll note, by the way, that if you ever had to retire your leader, uh, your hero, so if, like, if I use a Tainted Blade on her, then she would actually level down one and become level two for the rest of the game. So... Not something you want to necessarily do. All right, so we come around to Kronos with his super combo ready. So he's certainly going to taunt the Griffin over, the one who's still got pretty much all his life left. And he's doing Kronos, Scepter of Mastery, Projecting Ring, which gives him another taunt. Um, let's see. I mean, you might as well get the... Uh, well, no, no, you know, he doesn't want to taunt anybody because then he wouldn't be able to hit the two ranged people. So forget that. So he's going to attack. I oh, don't forget he has dual wield. That's why he can use both. So he's getting a green and a white die plus six. This should just be a destruction fest. Yes, that's 16 damage. Bye-bye, both of you. Now, I'll note with the location's ability, he could play another hero, but I don't really think he wants to. He unfortunately doesn't have two cards to discard for the Eagle Eye Sniper's eight snipe. Um, if he attacks the warg over there, then the draw guy will come right in and start attacking us. I guess he could taunt the harpy and then destroy the harpy. At least the two of them between. Yeah, sure, why not? So he'll taunt over our friend the harpy with two life left. Acolyte for one damage over here. Acolyte for one damage over here. Ba-bam, ba-bam. They're both gone. And uh, that harpy is defeated. But the location is still getting attacked for three, leaving it with six left. Now Cronus has to recruit. He's going to get the Wand of the Flame. It's not nearly as useful now that the uh, Splash Damage won't have very many targets to hit, but it's still the best item up there. And we reveal a Tainted Wand, basically the same as a Tainted Blade. White damage, retires the person who used it. Okay, and Cronus will get rid of the Eagle Eye Sniper, forget him, and let's see if we can get some of our better items. Oh, gosh. Soldier Acolyte Soldier. Holy Templar, that's a little better, but that is a rough draw to fight the boss with. Okay, and come over to Fiona. She must taunt. So uh, she'll taunt the warg. And then, you know what? I'll go ahead and play her out. And then her second taunt will pull over Drog. Because that immediately frees the red dragon in. And what is the power of a final location? A player of the party's choice may recruit a card from the reinforcements for free. Well, we're clearly going to let Fiona do that. And she's going to get that great axe just sitting for her. So that's a free one. Doesn't even use up a coin. Ooh, and a Warhorn. That would have been a nice one earlier as well. Draw a card and play an extra hero. Okay, so Fiona's going to play the Great Axe on herself. She's also going to play the Brewmaster with his green die with the Tainted Blade. So yes, it'll destroy him, but he would have never had enough time to come out anyway. And <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, we'll stop there for now, but we'll probably just try to play Kronos. And again, this is the introductory scenario. We should be just be able to destroy uh, Drog this turn. Okay, we'll have Fiona attack first. That's a white plus four plus her damage uh, bonus for two. So that is white plus six against both of them. So that is nine. Minus Strog's armor of two puts seven on him. And the warg is, of course, destroyed. Coming to the Brewmaster. He's got a green and a white before he uh, blows himself up with that blade. Oof. Rough roll there. Only four damage after the armor. Drog is half dead, but the Brewmaster is bye-bye. And I forgot that we each got to draw a card when I played the Brewmaster. Nothing too much good there, but maybe Cronus will get another item to use. Ooh, he did. Oh, man, and plus a hero? Okay, well, this just became a lot easier. Let's look at what Kronos can contribute to the fight to get that last nine damage. He's got himself. He can dual wield. So he'll give himself the Attenuating Ring and the Round of Flame. That lets us draw a card. Soldier, that's not going to help much, but it'll also throw up his Holy Templar. 
So uh, we're going to get a white and yellow with plus four, and then just a white, although they'll each face the two armor themselves. Okay, Cronus will try his luck first. This is white and yellow plus four. Oh man, the highest possible results for either. His reroll is not needed. That is 10 plus four minus two, 12 damage. Drog is indeed defeated. So there you have it, battle for Greyport. Fiona and Kronos were victorious over Drog, the troll general. And just to remind you, this is the introductory scenario, the updated one that's freely available online or in the very cheap expansion for the game. So the game can get ridiculously hard to compare to this. Although I was playing on hardcore mode where I didn't heal in between missions. But either way, this was uh, just kind of a sample of how the game plays. Hope you enjoy it. I think it's a great game and I recommend you check it out. I'll see you at the next stop and good gaming, everyone.